Right, so hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Bytes and in this video we'll specifically talk about OWD and what is OWD in Salesforce, right? OWD stands for org-wide defaults and whenever we talk about security and sharing records, about record access, the base layer or the base level setting that Salesforce configures or provides us as part of the platform is OWD, right? So org-wide defaults, which means kind of the default setting for every object on the organization level or the org level, right? That's org wide defaults. So this is basically nothing but the default access level of users over an object. And this is defined for every object separately. And this is the topmost security layer for ac access in Salesforce. I would rather say the base, the, the base on which every other security uh, implementation is done, right? Let's take a look at how does this look like on Salesforce. So here I'm on an org. And if I go to quick find and type in sharing settings, this is basically the OWD. So when I go under security sharing settings, this is what opens up and this is nothing but the organization wide default, right? And if you notice the sharing settings can be managed for all objects. And if you have a specific uh, request or a requirement for a specific object, you can very well go and click on that object and take a look at what would be the sharing for that particular object right the default sharing settings cool let's go back to all objects and we see that you have an entire table wherein you see the names of every object that you have in the system and you have some access related information right let's understand what all of this is cool so there are three primary levels for providing access to any object the first one being private this means that the record will only be available to the owner. So let's say you create a record in the system. You create a lead record in the system. Will I be able to access it? Will I be able to see it? Will I be able to edit or delete it? No, I won't be able to do any of these things because the accessibility or the OWD is set to private, right? So that's private. What about the next one? The next one is public read only. So public read only is nothing but you might be the record owner, but I still can see the record. I might not be able to edit it, but I can still see the record. So the record will be available to everyone, but only be editable by the owner, right? And when, when we say owner here, this is nothing but the record owner. And the third and most opened up access is the public read write, wherein the record will be available as well as editable to everyone, irrespective of who is the owner. Cool. So if you take a look at, let's say we take a look at the objects now, we'll see that, you know, the values are mostly private, public read write, private, public read only, right? These are the three values that we have discussed. There are some spe special cases wherein you have some other values. If you notice, like you have a control by parent value. This happens when your object is in a child, uh, parent child relationship and the, this object is the child. So as we can notice, contact is controlled by parent and contact is the immediate child of account. So based on whatever the security governance is that done on the account level will be respected and followed by the contact object records also. So that means it's co uh, controlled by parent, right? Some specific objects like lead and case, they don't have just public read, write. They have public read, write and transfer because leads can be transferred. The ownership can be transferred and same is with cases. So lead is that object on the sales cloud cycle, whereas case is the object on the service cloud cycle. They have the transfer option also, but more or less, most of your objects will have private public read only and public read write. And if I want to modify any specific access, I can just click on the edit button. And here, if you see, I can just modify it. Cool. If you notice account, I can modify any, any of these three values, right? So what if I do this, set this as private. If I set this as private, only the record owner of the account record will be able to access the record. No one else will be able to access it. And if you notice when I try to do this for account, it tells me that the opportunity access must be private when the account access is set to private because opportunity is a child of account. So it's giving me a prompt that, you know, the opportunity should also be private. If I say, okay, and then it tells me about case access also, because again, case is also dependent on the account, right? And then it tells me one more message when the case sharing mode is private, each case queue must have at least one member. So this is just some sort of a limitation or a uh, stringent rule from Salesforce that, you know, your case queue has to have one member, right? And now this has changed to private. And if you notice case has also turned private opportunity has also turned private, right? Because they are the subsequent records that come under account one way or the other. Cool. And if you notice contact, what do I have on the contact? I have these options, but it says controlled by parent by default because it, it's the, the security is kind of governed by the parent object. Cool. Let's say I take a look at maybe 
what other object do I want to take a look at? Maybe invoice, right? Invoice has private, public, read only, right? And then public read write. And what is public read write? Public read write means it will be available and editable by any and everyone in the system. No restrictions. What is public read only? Public read only means only the record owner can edit the record, but everyone else can see it. And what is private? Private is only the record owner can see it, edit it, play around with it, but no one else can see it. Cool? So those are, those are the three primary values. And then we also see that there is a separate access configuration for the two types of users that we host. One is the internal users and the other one is external. If you take a look at this table, you have two sections, right? One is for the default internal access and the other one is for the default external access. What is internal access? This is for the internal users who have a username and password and who log into this org. Whereas external users are people who log into portals or communities or sites, right? To the experience cloud. So those are the external users. Cool. So you have a different set of uh, uh, different section for uh, selecting the access and this makes it easier to manage two different kind of users for every object, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, setting one uh, specific uh, uh, security model and access level for every object. You can do it separately for internal and external, but you cannot have the external rule, external access more than what's there on the internal level. So if I show you, let's say opportunity is private, right? Let's say I try to do external accesses, public read write on the external level. So this gives me a message, that's fine. I'll say, okay, see so it still says private. It does not change. It does not let me change it, right? What about an independent object? Let's say we go back to invoice. That might have a dependency on the account, but let's say invoice is private here and I try to make this public read write, right? And I try to save it. Let's see what happens. So this will say that, you know, your values will be recalculated. I'll say, okay, now it's saying error invalid data. Please review your error message. What is the message? The default external access must be more restrictive or equal to the default internal access. So the best you can do for external users is keep it equal to your internal user access. You cannot give them more access than what internal internal users have. Does that make sense? Right? One more example would be if this is public read only, this can only be private or public read only less restrict more restrictive or equal cannot be uh, more opened up than the internal cool what's the next thing that we see that we also get an opportunity to allow configuring hierarchy based access for role ba role based sharing now we have roles in the system right and roles can be configured and used to share records and you know uh, for the to uh, um, people on higher on the hierarchy to get access to records uh, created by people below them right and that's why you see this third column that says grant access using hierarchies now keep a note in mind that this is not available for standard objects you can only enable or you know disable them for custom objects right now i do not have any stand any custom object so it's not editable for any of the standard objects right and by default for standard objects it is set to true which means let's say you are my manager and i create a record you will automatically be able to access my record because you are on top of my uh, on top of the ladder in terms of the role hierarchy right so that's basically granting access using hierarchies and if it were a custom object let's say some custom object abc you would be able to turn this off which means your manager will not be able to see the record that you create if you want to configure it that way cool what's the next thing whenever any sharing access is changed the sharing for the object is recalculated and the user is notified via email we saw this right now right look if, if i if i let's say we go back and just update this to public private this time it should save and I'll just say save, right? So I get a message, see, it will be recalculated based on the new defaults and this will take some significant time. You will be notified with an email. That's what it says. So I'll say okay and you'll get a message here. See, one or more sharing operations have been initiated. Certain operations may, be, may not be available. So uh, we'll be notified by, via email once this is done and this pop-up message will go away once it is completed. So let's refresh. It does not take much time. It's a significant time, but it does not really take that long. So it will probably take uh, maybe 30 seconds or one minute and then it will disappear from here. And once it disappears from here, your new values will come down in the sharing settings and all your records, all the access would have been modified based on the new settings that you have put in place. Cool. What's the next thing to look at? The next thing is the best practice is to set object access to private and open up only to specific users based on criteria or requirements, which means the object access to 
should be set to private and you should only open up access to specific users based on any criteria or requirements so there's something that's called criteria based sharing rules or there are some sharing rules which, which uh, there are rules that you can create and configure so that you can provide access to specific users now why is that beneficial that means you don't have records lingering around everywhere and anywhere and for people to you know just take a look at them and you know modify them because the more data there's available the more uh, changes it, it is you know prone to so ideally for uh, even even if, if your data is not sensitive or you know uh, does not have any compliance issues you should still go for private or public read only access and then open up your access based on the requirement that's the rule of thumb or rather the best practice cool so that was all about OWT, the base layer of security in Salesforce. That's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.